Almighty God, when you spoke, the world was created. <coughs> Everything came into being at your behest. Now we come to hear your mighty word once again. We come with feeble minds, dull of hearing, slow to understand and obey. And we pray for the work of your Holy Spirit in conjunction with the means of grace, that we might grow up into Christ, be conformed to his image, and learn to be obedient to your will. So bless us now, we pray in his name. Amen. Please turn in your Bibles to uh, Genesis, chapter 1, verse 27, through chapter 2, verse 3. Let us hear the word of God. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God he created him. Male and female he created them. And God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the earth and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the heavens, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. And God said, Behold, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is on the face of the earth, and every tree with seed in its fruit. You shall have them for food. And to every beast of the earth, and to every bird of the heavens, and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has the breath of life, I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the host of them. And on the seventh day God finished his work that he had done, and he had rested on the seventh, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work that he had done. So God blessed the seventh day, and made it holy, because on it God rested from all his work that he had done in creation. Amen. May God bless his infallible word to our understanding. Well, this evening we come to the, uh, the second in this uh, short series on the Lord's Day. And uh, what I want to do this evening is, is to look at the original intention of the Sabbath day as we can discern that from uh, the fact of creation and what God did at the conclusion of his work of creation, and then from the Sabbath law. So my three divisions this evening are as follows, the Sabbath as an ordinance, the Sabbath as an ordinance, and that goes back to the origins, the passage that we just read. Secondly, the Sabbath as a law. Sabbath as a law, and then thirdly, the purpose of the Sabbath, very briefly. Now, uh, if you were here, you'll remember that last week we introduced our subject by looking at the Sabbath, firstly in society, and then in the church, in the past, and in the present. <coughs> uh, and we made certain comments about that, which I, I don't propose to repeat at this time. Uh, but our main concern was the, the great purpose of the Sabbath. And we saw that the great purpose of the Sabbath was for us to delight in the Lord and not in ourselves. And if we delight in the Lord, and this was really the great conclusion we arrived at, if, if we delight in the Lord, we will delight in His day. There's not a problem here. If, if God is in the forefront of our thinking, then His day will also be. And it will be a joy to us because the Lord is a joy. And since the Sabbath is the Lord's day, then we will be joyful in it. But what I want to do this evening is, is to consider the main characteristics of the Sabbath as a requirement of God's law in relation to the Sabbath as an ordinance of creation. And that's why 
I've uh, given you those three headings. And we're going to begin with the Sabbath as an ordinance of creation. We read just now that the heavens and the earth were finished and all the host of them. And on the seventh day, God finished his work that he had done and he rested on the seventh day from all his work that he had done. So God blessed the seventh day and made it holy because on it God rested from all his work that he had done in creation. Those are the words that we're going to focus on to consider the Sabbath as an ordinance of creation. So we're going right back to the beginning. The Confession of Faith says that God in his word by a positive moral and perpetual commandment binding all men in all ages has particularly appointed one day in seven for a Sabbath to be kept holy for him. Now, if you think about that, and if you think about the commandment that we're going to look at in a minute, um, they both actually pick up the, the salient features of what happened when God finished his work of creation. The confession and the commandment both pick up the perpetuity of the Sabbath, the obligation to keep it holy, and the fact that it was appointed by God. Those three basic features are contained in the commandment and in the confession of faith and both reflect what is said about the origin of the Sabbath in Genesis chapter 2 verses 1 to 3. And so we're going to start with the last of those things that I mentioned, the appointment of the Sabbath by the Lord God. And when you look at Genesis 2, 1 to 3, you can see how the Sabbath actually came to be. Uh, it, its origins lie in three related ideas. And those ideas are cessation from work, refreshment in contemplation, and the sanctification of the day. I'm going to mention those again, so don't worry about it. The Sabbath came to be, firstly, in God ceasing from his work of creation. God created everything in six days. Then he rested. From that point on, God has been busy sustaining all things by the word of his power. It's not as if a God almost ceased to exist. He has been active. He is busy now in the sustaining of all his creation, but he rested from the work of creation. And that rest, that divine exemplar, if you like, was going to prove very necessary in the light of man's subsequent fall and the curse that fell on the creation. Uh, at the time, uh, it was not apparent to anybody, well, there was nobody, but even when when Adam came along, I suppose it would not have been apparent to him then just how much he was going to need God's example and how the, how the creation was going to need God's example as it came to be enshrined in a commandment. And so God's ceasing to work really is basic to the idea of the Sabbath and of course that's what the word means. In, in, in the Hebrew, it does have a, a, a fairly broad semantic field, and so you have the idea of rest, the, 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 the notion of the seventh day, it's all bound up in that word. And so, this is what God blessed and sanctified. He sanctified the rest. He sanctified cessation from work. That's what he did on that day, and he sanctified or made that day holy. And by doing that, he created it as an ordinance. He appointed it. He ordained it. And so the Sabbath is not an invention. It's not a human construct. It's not something that developed in somebody's culture. It's not the imposition of one group of people on another group of people. The Sabbath comes directly from God. 
God rested and he blessed and sanctified that eternal day of rest. So it's constituted by God's decision and by God's example. And that's what makes this cessation from work fundamental to the idea of the Sabbath. So that's the first element in considering how the Sabbath came to be. God ceased from his work of creation. But then we are told that he was refreshed. And this is the second feature. This notion of resting, if you like. In Exodus 31 verse 17, we read, In six days the Lord made heaven and earth, but on the seventh day he ceased from labor and was refreshed. Interesting terminology. And was refreshed. As if God had grown tired, perhaps. Well, of course not. It doesn't mean that. He wasn't fatigued. It wasn't that the work of six days had really taken it out of him. But somehow or other, he, he rested and was refreshed in that day of rest. So, on the principle that Scripture interprets Scripture... When we turn to Genesis 1.31, God having completed his creative work, we read that he saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good, and there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. So, cessation from work for God is, if you like, refreshment. And refreshment is, if you like, the contemplation of all that he had done. God looked at his work and seems to have derived satisfaction from that. Matthew Henry puts it like this. God finished his work, then rested from it, and acquiesced in it. Now to acquiesce in something is, is to be at ease in it. To be at ease. To, to take pleasure from, to derive satisfaction from. And so the suggestion here is that God gets satisfaction from viewing his own work, the perfection of his works, the virtue of his creation corresponds to his own perfection. In other words, the creation is a mirror of the perfection of God. And God rested and contemplated what he had done with, with approval, if you like, with satisfaction. And so when we come to consider this idea of ceasing to work, we must add to it this other element of resting or of being refreshed uh, in the contemplation of the works of God. That also must come somehow into our understanding of the Sabbath. So that's the second element. The, the first was cessation, uh, the, se the second was refreshment through contemplation, and the third, of course, is consecration. God blessed it and made it holy. It's quite clear, isn't it, from the creation account that God intended the seventh day to be rather different from the other six. He conferred on it special honour. He blessed it, and he sanctified it, he made it holy, he separated it from the other six. And so that also must be fundamental to the notion of the Sabbath day. 